Hi everyone, your Chess Puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. Before I get this game off the ground, I use my crystal sphere to see how both Wesley and Magnus would look like in the future. And this is what my crystal will reveal. How accurate are these predictions? Well, let's wait and see in 30 years time. Now this is a good version of them. And trust me, you don't really want to see how each Magnus and Wesley would dry up if I used the not so good version of them. Maybe another day I can show you them. I guess this game today dominates round 13. Absolutely anything can happen here. Magnus has already broken another record for not losing in 117 classical games, maybe more. I lost count. He's got another record under his belt. He was too happy not to lose his game of round four against Jordan and in round three, in fact, against Jeffrey. Today, he's up against a totally unpredictable Wesley So Magnus has the black pieces, but it's all about the opening and how each choose to play it. Wesley on a good day is unbeatable. He has beaten Magnus before but he also is fully aware of how hard it is to beat Magnus, whatever opening he chooses to play. The game starts in a few moments. The board is set up and details are coming up. So we are ready to shoot. Let us expect something spectacular to unfold, but don't keep your hopes up. If players want to draw, and particularly Magnus, we're looking at a 90% chance here for this draw. Okay, because the game is yet to get started, do allow me to make mention to one app in particular, in case you may not know it exists. First of all, it's absolutely free. It's very new, and this is what it looks like. It is mainly designed for high products. It also runs on Android operating systems. This is also one of the very few applications where you can play the game and also earn money simply by playing. Okay, it's called Chess Puzzle Blitz. Let me show you a bit more on this before I move on. This chap you see on the top left, here in the second picture from the left, is the brain behind it all. Very quickly, the main key features are also listed here. Please read them in your own time. If you have problems downloading the application on Android, you can always get in touch. It's a bit tricky to download, but it can be downloaded nevertheless. So how does it work? There's some interesting puzzles, which require you to solve a mate in X number of moves. Okay, the Magnus Wesley game has started already but I'm always moving two or three moves behind. Let me run you very quickly through just puzzle blitz. All you need is to finish off this task faster than other people. The application also tells you underneath in how many moves a checkmate is achieved. If you make a mistake, you can take back and continue from there. The mate in one, or the mate in one, the mate in one problems are pretty straightforward but this is something for all levels. Top right are the points you score. What you really need to do here is to finish off and solve all the puzzles before your time falls. The ticks on top of your screen tell you how many puzzles were solved. And again, you are required to have all these circles ticked before you can move on. Straightforward. If you have been paying attention to what goes on on the right side of your screen, we have two players, and I guess <laughs> it's all about girl power, so the girl has beaten the guy. This application is brand new. As soon as it comes out of his testing mode, they can start earning some money. Okay, let's come back to the main theme of today. Wesley White kicks it off with, we have an E for opening. 
and this would be of a surprise. Magnus responds with e5. Knight f3, knight c6, and this looks very interesting. Not the Spanish and not the Italian. What should you make of this knight response by Wesley? It's a three knights variation, but it's very early days to confirm where this game is going. Knight f6, move that is now confirmed, moves the game into the four knights variation. And for this initiative by Wesley, we do have something these two never really played before. It's the four knights scotch. And this is exactly the type of game everyone wants to watch. Takes, takes, and Magnus goes for this pin. And though this opening is straightforward, there are many, many tricky positions. Wesley replied with the main response to this variation. He traded the knight, forcing or semi-forcing Magnus to capture the knight in this way. Do it the other way around. We're looking at an entirely different type of game. The queens come off. The king would lose his castle in rights. And white will come out of this opening with a dream position. Coming back to avoid or prevent the pawn on e4 from coming off. This is how Wesley did it. And this prepares white to also get his king to safety. Magnus could castle. But he doesn't. This is what he does. And it's war from the word go. It's a very powerful and daring Magnus initiative. Wesley must have prepared this move because he plays it instantly. This is what he does. A very solid bishop d2, blocking the axis to any checks. Magnus here leaves the position as it is in castles. And you will be mad not to do the same thing. Wesley took his time here. Four minutes later, he copied what Magnus did, and the position is bound to break wide open. First of all, Magnus traded his bishop for the knight, and then goes on to remove this pawn from the center of the board. So what is the idea here? Go for the wrong turn, and you will get busted. What we have here is forced. Wesley grabbed the knight. The queen captured Mr. Bishop. And now when this pawn came off, Magnus retaliates with this response. If this game's end in a draw, at least we get to see a different way of getting there, rather than both Magnus and Wesley agreeing to it without a battle. When this situation arose, Wesley too grabbed this pawn, and what follows next is self-explanatory. Rook b8, rook b1, and again... We mostly have forced responses. Takes, 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 and takes. And this game, and before he gets off the ground, Magnus, without delay, activated his rook, paralyzing this rook on b1 to the first rank. Bishop f3, king f8, Wesley goes for it. He pins the bishop, but if he wants to make a big bang, he's one move too short. There is king e8. But other moves also exist. This is how Magnus does it, which might be even better than King E8. It creates another mating opportunity. Wesley's response is straightforward. It's either G3, H3, G4, or H4. A move like King F1 is deadly. This bishop move is all you need. And this is how other games end. But of course, not this one. This is what Wesley did. Magnus is very cunning, but so is Wesley. Magnus still went for the easy way out. He wanted out and knows at least the only way to retain his unbeaten record is to draw this game. So this is how he continues. And he's passing actually on the decision to Wesley to decide what he wants to do. If he wants the draw, all he needs to do is to get rid of the rocks. If he wants to fight on this... <coughs> This may still be a draw, but if the rooks do not come off, the game will still continue. Wesley chose to push on. He opted for this rook move. And after this initiative followed, Wesley does not trade, but goes for this. I beg your pardon. He does trade the bishops because he saw something. 
This is what that something was. And there is one way to save this pawn. Magnus saved this pawn after f3, king e8, and king f2. This game will go all the way. King d7 is as bold as moves get. Rook a3 secures this pawn on a7. But is this a blunder? Magnus will not slip. But does he slip here? Rook e5. Rook takes. And rook c5. And this is how he will regain whatever he lost. King e3 was another bold response. Takes. G4. And boom. H5. Trying to break this very strong pawn formation. There is king f4. But Wesley goes for this. Having your play. Rook c4 will again gain the pawn. And though f4 does not change much, this is how Wesley plays it. Takes, rook g5, king e6, and not rook takes, which looks to be the easy way out. But this is how Wesley chooses to play it. He chases after this pawn. Rook to the other side of the board, and it's all down to the last few pawns. And surprise, surprise, not takes on c7, but this initiative by Wesley. Magnus took. The pawn on c7 came off. And if you eliminate this pawn on a2, this check on c6 will gain the pawn on h6. So what Magnus did here was to just delay taking. He went king f6. The king was checked. The king backed off. And this is how this pawn on a2 is saved. King g6, king back to f2, and if this is not a draw, I don't know what is. The fight still goes on, though. h5, king g3, and king up the board. And it's like both Magnus and Wesley are trying to end this game, breaking another type of record. Wesley has two hours and six minutes on his clock, and Magnus has two hours and four minutes on his own. Rook c7 attacking this pawn led to this push. And because of this check, the king move is forced. f5. And if you don't fancy rook c2, what do you think of this rook response by Wesley? In a way, Wesley is encouraging Magnus to remove this pawn on a2, but he doesn't. This is how Magnus plays it. Rook to the back rank. And this rook move by Magnus. And he's really looking for fast results. Wesley, too, goes for his usual tricks. Not a4, but a3. King f4 creates a very difficult type of situation. If you take with a check, once this pawn also goes, white is finished, or nearly finished. Only king h2 works. If f4, there is rook h7, and this ending should be equal. Coming back, Wesley doesn't even remove this guy with a check. This is what he does. Rook a1 led to this pawn push, and you don't need anyone to tell you what happens if you take here. This is what Magnus did, sitting back and waiting for this pawn to move. Wesley went on to eliminate this pawn. Pawn number two also came off. And what an interesting type of ending. Rook b4 led to f4. And once this check followed, after king f2, Wesley blunders with his king move and it was game over. Now, this is only half of the story. This is exactly what happened. But is this king move to g4 a blunder? Rook takes led to this check. And after this sequence of responses, which... Is again forced. We have yet another draw to an extremely fast yet very efficient game. No one can really say this draw was in any way an easy way out because it wasn't. It may not have been the most spectacular game, but at least both can hold their heads very high. Wesley ends his game with two hours and two minutes on his clock, and Magnus breaks yet another type of record. He ends his game with two hours. 3 minutes and 43 seconds on his own. Winning a single game in Tata is extremely hard. Fabi is still in the sole lead. 
And even if he loses his game today, it is very safe to say who wins Tata this year. Far more to come. So until soon, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.